Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session for the Industrial Design Rhino and Grasshopper course. So today we are going to introduce a very important topic in our modeling world, which is called the continuity. And let me start with an example showing you what are different kind of continuity for services. So I will include the references that I've used for my personal like study experiences. And uh, I gained a lot of knowledge in those videos and uh, tutorials. So this one first is like talking about the continuity for lines or curves. And then this one is talking about the continuity for the surfaces and which is specifically published by the Rhino. A very, very good tutorial. I don't think I can ever reach to that quality for my own tutorials. And the last one is from Autodesk. Uh, they have their uh, alias, which is a like industrial standard software for car modeling. So let's jump into uh, G0 continuity. It is also called the positional continuity. So for example, like right now, let me explode this device. So right now here, this surface and this surface in between the continuity is called the G0, which means the edges of this surface and this surface, right, on this edge are, the, are perfectly matched, which is saying that two surfaces are sharing the same edge on a continuous manner. So from continuous means like there's no breaking points in between, right, from here to here, uh, it is a G0. And when you use zebra here, you can see that the strips are completely irrelevant and disconnected, right? So when you zoom in, they are none of the strips are quite matching to each other. So this is G0. That means like you simply put two surfaces together and they can uh, get this continuity. And then next, let's talk about G1, which is a tangency continuity. When we are trying to achieve G1, that means that the G0 has already uh, been achieved. Uh, and on top of the G0, the tangent direction of the adjacent surfaces is the same. So that means when we explode this again, those two surfaces, uh, the tangent on the specific surface, like on the specific points, they are the same across the two surfaces, right? If I draw a curve on the top of the surface, it should be continuous in terms of its tangency. So that's G1. And the, when we check the zebra here, and when we zoom in, you can see that they are continued, right? This, this strip goes all the way to this like strip, right? I mean, they are basically the same strip, but they have these little kinks in between which is in G1 continuity, which is tangent continuity. And next, let's go to the G2, uh, as you can expect. G2, when we are trying to achieve G2, that means that a radius of the curvature at the edge of the surfaces are the same, right? So the radius of the curvature along this surface and the, this surface, they are the same, which means when we doing the zebra analysis, you zoom in, there are, when you zoom in, like they are more smoother than the last one. And uh, although there are like little uh, polylines kind of strips, but it's no longer just like come over here and have like a very sharp edge. When you come back to the G1, you can see that it's almost like a super sharp edge and it completely ignored the tangency or the direction that's being presented by this surface here. So that's like a G0, G1, G2, and G3, which is called the torsion continuity. It's really not that common in the industry, except according to this uh, description from the alias, G3 can be a criteria for the class A surface, which again, in most of the industrial design uh, world, this is not a criteria. G2 is usually the like the highest standard. I mean, a few years ago when Apple having, having their products, they are making this announcement that they're the edge of their phones uh, cases, they are, they are having this G2 continuity. Okay, let's begin the modeling process for this device. 
First of all, I have to say that this device, uh, you can see that here, this is kind of like a sagging part, a smooth curve. I don't really like this design because as an architect, I rather to have a small smooth surface, like a flat surface right here that we can use it for some sort of like a spatial order. And, uh, but the modeling process between uh, something like flat like this or between something like this is actually the same, except that in order to achieve this surface, we are going to turn on the control points and drag things down to, to make this surface. And this one should be generated by sweep two rails. Uh, the blending process are all the same. So this time for this project, I'm going to introduce this method because this device can be used as a industrial design project. And also this part has some architecture meaning behind it. So you can see that this is pretty much just a disc. And uh, so I will make this shape by scale 1D a sphere. So I will start to draw a sphere first and uh, type in zero, go to the top view and uh, snack here, just five inches. Okay, perfect. Let me scale down the reference photo a little bit and then move it up a little bit. Okay, perfect. Let me lock it again. So the next step I will do is I will rebuild it, give it more control points, 12 by 12. Uh, after giving it more control points, of course, I can have more controls over it in a more detailed manner. I'll do that and I'll go to the front view. Roughly this from top to the bottom will be around two inches. Okay, it's, it doesn't really matter, but I will just do around two inches. Next thing I will do is I will rotate it. So the seam will not be on our way if we are drawing something like this. And uh, I will go to the top view and uh, kind of draw this curve right here. Okay, roughly good. The next thing I will do is a little bit tricky. In order to split this uh, part out of this original sphere or disc, I have to have an enclosed like curve, right? Or at least this curve have to make an overlap. But this part is it's not an enclosed curve. So I have to draw something here. But in order to keep the uh, continuity of the surface, the best way to like do so is to cut this part by using an ISO curve from the original surface. And I will show you here. Right here, we want to keep the continuity between this part and this part in a perfect manner. So now I want to cut this part off with an ISO curve. I will show you how to, let's dry, drag an ice curve. I will show you how and why. So first I will drag an ISO curve here and then I will trim everything that's unnecessary. Okay, I got this. And the next I will choose split and uh, select object to split and uh, select the cutting objects, perfect. Right here, let's turn on the zebra. So if we join them together, you can see that the zebra line in between are perfect. A vertical, also perfect, right? Horizontal, perfect, vertical, perfect. That is the reason if we do it uh, in this manner, most of the time it will give us the best result. And then the next thing I will do is I will come over here to the shaded mode, turn off the zebra and uh, explode everything. And then I will isolate this and then turn on the control points because I want to flat it a little bit. But you can see that the control points are everywhere. And uh, let me hide this surface, make a copy here, and then isolate those two objects. Also, I will hide this. Okay, so let's turn it on. You can see that the control points between this and this are exactly the same. Why is that? Because in Rhino, when you split a surface, in order to preserve the continuity of this 
partial uh, surface, uh, they are keep all the original control points from the original surface. So they simply hide the rest of the surface without really deleting it mathematically. But we are trying to make it flat here. So we have to control it in a better way. In order to do so, I will use this command called shrink trimmed surface, right? Shrinked it. And then I will turn on the control points here. So they are more local and then I can change it. And as you can see that if we change anything here, then this row, this row, this row, and this row, the continuity will be changed for this, uh, between this surface and this surface, because the mathematically it's more complicated than that, but you can think roughly as this is, you, this row is used to control the G0, G1, G2, G3, so on and so forth. But let's just select those points here and then trying to make them flat. I will just use set PT, which stands for set point, and then make them flat, go to the front view and uh, something like this. Okay, so yeah. The next thing I will do is I will go back to our reference photo. You can see that there is this blend in between and for the model that I made that I think can be a good educational like material for both architecture and the industrial design students is that this is a flat surface and there's the edge between this and this um, is kind of like shrinked inward a little bit and uh, kind of offset the edge a little bit. So what I would do here is I will offset this edge right here. I will just use a curve that I use to cut this cut like surface or split the surface in the first place. So I will just use this isolate, copy and paste, wait a little bit because of a bug, copy and paste and set PT. I will project them to the plan, right? Okay, set PT and uh, again, isolate everything else. The next thing I will do is I will offset this curve. So I will do 0 0.5 here. So here I will offset it for 0 0.5. And I will choose no trim, okay, no trim. Otherwise it will trim it. So no trim like this. And then I will delete a bunch of points here. Move this to this edge. Delete bunch of points here, move these points to this corner, and then adjust them a little bit more. Okay, I'll go to the top view to do so. Sorry, not this one. And I will also adjust those two a little bit. Okay, I'll make it a little bit more smoother. Perfect. So the next thing I will do is I will come back to the surface that I was working on before, isolate it again, go to the top view. Okay, let's just trim it. Select the object to trim. Okay, we got it. Okay, so the next thing we will do is we will try to blend those two surfaces. But before that, let's check the zebra again. If we join them together, you can see that the curvature in between are amazing. The strips are perfectly smooth between surfaces. Okay, so we will turn it off and blend surf. Surf one, surface two, hit okay. And then we will join them together. Bang, works very well, zebra. And you can see that the continuity in between are great, right? The, uh, this like, G2 continuity are almost the highest um, possible like standard in the industry. Of course, there are some people are selling the idea of G3, but that is just extremely hard. It's very hard to do it in Rhino. So let's look at this. You can see that this is, in order to keep this continuity for the two surfaces to match, there's this very awkward direction here. So 
in order to get rid of that, let's try to add some shapes in between, which means let's use blend again, blend surf first, second, and uh, there are a bunch of ways we can change the direction here. We can change the here and here, right? So, and let's see how it works. We can also, we can drag the sections in between a little bit and hit okay. It, okay, so we need to add, join them together, okay? You can see that this is extremely good. They are very smooth in between. And uh, we can hide the zebra line. But you can see that the wireframe here is a little bit dragged, right? It's not exactly what we want. We want, we want it to be more perpendicular in the 2D projection. So when we go to the top, we want those control like lines or wireframes are more perpendicular to both of those lines. So, or curves. So what we can do is we can, so we can explode it and go to the top, draw a bunch of lines that's perpendicular to this sets of parallel lines. Turn off the offset, uh, O snap. Let me draw one more line here, one more line here. The next thing I will do, so the next thing I will do is I will project those lines into those surfaces. So this one, this one, go to the top view and hit enter. Okay, so we got it. So the next thing I will do is I will hit blend surface, first curve, second curve, and then I will choose add shapes. You can see that they already have a shape here. That means uh, there's a kink on the curve here. So we don't have to do anything here to put a cross section there. And we just keep doing that. And you understand why I'm doing it in a second. Then hit enter. Now you can play with those handles. So long story short, there are one, two, three points here. Z, uh, the first point you can consider as the guardian for the G0 connection or continuity. The second is like G1 and there are three of them The is like G2, right? So you can play with those handles so it can help you to regulate the shape of this cross section or this blend surface. It's quite tedious to do so, but it's necessary. And that's the only way, or pretty much the only way we can manipulate the cross section uh, for the blend surfaces. Okay. The last one looks fine for me and I'll hit okay. So the next thing I would do it's, you can see that the cross sections, uh, the wireframe right now is much more regulated than before. And I will join them together and you can see that the surface looks great. What I will do is I will turn on the zebra again. You can see that the continuity in between here are amazing. And uh, when we zoom in over here, you can see that although it looks like there are kink here, but when you really zoom in, it looks very good transition. So that's how you make a G2 continuity on a surfaces connections or blend surfaces like this. So in order to make this project more uh, complete, I will uh, add more details to it. As our reference photo showed here, all right, it's, there's some centerpiece and I'm not interested. So again, in order to make something exactly like what they are showing on this image, we have to draw some cross sections in between and use the sweep to rails um, 
So basically sweep to as our command to generate the surface and then cut the edge off and then blend surfaces, the top one and the bottom one, right? So the process overall pro workflow is the same. The only difference is that we manage this um, like flat surface on the end by making a split and then change those control points. So let's get on the top view and then take a look. So because of the uh, curve that we use to cut this like surface is not that smooth on this part. So it's it has definitely have a huge room for improvement uh, for that. And when you're doing your own model, you can definitely check it. But here for the uh, educational purpose, I think this is enough. And then I will hide this image and uh, add some more details to it. I'll just type in zero and then draw this curve and then split this. Go to the phone view and split it again. Perfect. Delete everything. Delete here. And then isolate this part. Make a copy. Rotate it. Again, make a copy. Move it here and join everything together. So the next thing I will do is I will turn on the rendered mode and you can see that this is great. And uh, I will go back to the ghosted, right? You can see all the surfaces actually are perfectly smooth, right? The connections in between are great. When you really zoom in, you can see that. For also the horizontal direction, when you really zoom in, you can see that the connection here are actually very smooth. So great, that's our example for this small device that you can gain a lot of knowledge for blend surfaces and surface continuities. Thank you so much.